I think that was emotional as well, I felt. <laughs> I don't really, usually don't feel emotional. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can I have the PPT, guys? If you see the PPT, right? Guess who made it? The handiwork. Yeah, so uh, obviously women's handiwork. Aksa, thank you Aksa for the PPT. All right, so. Yeah, my uh, theme, uh, sorry, uh, title for my message is Victorious, Living Victorious Life or a Victorious Life. I've taken this title from originally from our foundation book, which we take. And then I took content from Peter Tanchi, who is a very good speaker and a pastor. So, yeah, based on that, I've just taken this particular uh, message. Okay, next slide, please. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. One more time. Style. His wrong screen is good. Strike into the crowd. <laughs> Audio, please. How many of you remember this event? <laughs> All right, that, the one what we saw is the World Cup winning that 2011. And that was winning victorious moment for India. I was so passionate for cricket, so that was, that's the only moment I remember, even if you wake me up in the middle of the night, right? So God wants your life and you to be successful and victorious in everything that you do. Right? So, so I want, we want to run through a book from book of Joshua 1 and uh, see how this book unpacks for us God's principles for us to be, uh, lead a victorious life. Right? Someone said, we don't know what the future looks like, but we know who holds it. Amen. Right? Okay, there are three principles from this book of chapter 1 is, one is God's purpose, God's promises, and God's precepts. Okay, God's purpose, importance of knowing and believing in God's purpose, no purpose if you do not align your life to God's purpose. Second, God's promises, one thing to know, another thing to apply. And third thing is God's precepts. Precedes. It's nothing but the word of God, or Bibles, and one must understand the instructions of this manual so that we live a life of victorious life, right? So let me read chapter 1 and uh, I will read a couple of verses and I will come back to them again and again. Okay, Joshua Chapter 1, verse 1. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all these people to the land which I am giving you, giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you, just as I have spoken to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. All right, first thing, the point we talked about is God's promises. Right? 
Yeah, before that, I just want to give a brief about it. Now it came about. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So now it came about after the after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. The Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, "So, I have underlined the servant of the Lord in specific, because the highest compliment yes. God can give you is the servant of the Lord." I think somebody spoke some time back, actually, so about the same thing. Like, servant of the Lord is a greatest title that you can get. You. begin to serve god by learning to serve others you cannot be a servant and be a leader at the same time my prayer is the is that end of my life right so i want god to call me a servant of the lord that's my goal that's my mission ultimately you know what makes me surprised when i come to church I, sometimes you feel if you're a newcomer you see anu and uh, dennis both on the entire family you see that they have permanently doing full time job serving the church right so they are really not paid for that up until this time joshua is called the servant of moses if you see servant of moses right and then as we close the chapter and he is called servant of the lord moving on the first thing is god's promises so have we read as we have read joshua chapter 1 2 2 5 notice that there are amazing promises around it promises to the nation of israel is always you know a piece of land and you all know the current story but however i just want to say that god has really promised the entire space and it is said that the promise for the israelites or a moses is that, that no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life just as i have been with moses i will be with you and i will not fail you nor forsake you right so is there anyone who spoke a neighbor of yours i can tell you this word don't worry i mean be like in all the days of my life i'll be with you i will support you you know i'll not forsake you even the closest friends are the ones <laughs> whom we encounter uh yeah betrayal right so it is here god who says that such promise you don't find it any other book here in the here in the god's word you find that god really is with you even he means it he means it right so what what continue to read right he says that be strong and courageous be strong and courageous for you shall give this people possession of the land which i swore to their fathers to give and he continues on the next word next verse as well again be strong and courageous he repeatedly says be strong and courageous so it is stating that you know imagine this joshua is just anger mature like our joshua joshua please come on the stage <laughs> so i thought i'll play some cricket today in the church <laughs> right so if i actually is the young joshua okay i'm spinning the ball now are he panicked and dropped it oh oh again gone will he catch the ball can you guess oh guess was a good catch finally got it thanks joshua so the problem is that why he said that joshua can you come here just he repeatedly says why you know when initially was two times he was actually very uh, panicked panicky right he couldn't catch the ball you know god if god was there he would have come and said this verse 
Joshua, be strong and courageous. <laughs> so, he would have shaken you up. That's what it means actually. He's not giving you a suggestion. He's telling you, he's shaking you up. Be strong and courageous. The Lord your God is with you. And wherever you tread your foot, he's with you. So, this promise is not only for our Joshua and Moses. It is for you. It is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Joshua and to us. Right? Yeah, so when you look at these verses, right? So, God, one more thing, Joshua, God's purpose of Joshua is not to just bless him financially or careerly, or career-wise, but, but to bless him and make him a leader to lead a nation. So what is our... Yeah, sorry for the pause. Yeah. Your purpose and my, our, my purpose is not just to bless you, but make you a great leader. And if you open Matthew chapter 28, 19 to 20, can you all open the Bible? I will read it while you open, while you're opening it. Verse 19, go therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Here again, I've not, I've highlighted it, but it's gone. I am with you. I am with you, Joshua, go. And be strong and courageous, go wherever you tread your land, go, I am with you. So God is with us. What is our purpose? Very simple from this verse, everybody knows it. Go, and I am with you. Make disciples. Sing, I, you have been blessed. Go and show that blessing to others, I am with you. It's not that you have to become an eagle, actually. The pastor said that, God gives the strength of our eagle when since you soar like on the wings of an eagle when you take up a challenge, anything that comes around. And uh, so yeah, you, anybody knows this? Yes. Author of this? Yes. Yes. Oh, everybody knows. <laughs> I thought I'm only the old generation. <laughs> okay. So William Colgate, right? He's a man known for generosity, man known for conviction of faith, and he's humble. And he faced so many challenges. Joshua's task ahead of him is much, much bigger. Because whatever Moses has carried so far is a bigger legacy. People leaving a land of slavery and coming out of the mouth of a big giant like Pharaoh and then carrying on the baton to the next, the promised land is not a bigger, is not a smaller task. It is really a very big task. But your work and your, whatever you do is a mission field. Colgate is one of those that, you know, he's, he had a very humble beginnings. And he, he and his wife, they went through a lot of challenges. Even as they're growing their business, they're known for their integrity and quality and the customer, hap uh, customer happiness. And these principles they held on to and they held on to God. And they continue to pursue even in the competitive market. But God blessed them. You know one of the reasons why they God, God blessed them. He is known for his generosity. His earnings, 90% of would go to church. And towards giving, 90%. No wonder God really blessed you. So if you want to be blessed, you start giving 90 percentage. <laughs> Sorry, it's a pastor. <laughs> Please talk to pastor. <laughs> All right. Okay, you are a devout Baptist who actively participated in the church activities. And he served as a deacon 
contributed generously, contributed generously to his church building projects and even supported missionaries financially. All right? So the bottom line is that your purpose and work that whatever you do at home, mothers, whatever you do, it is that's the purpose that God has placed you to serve him. Not just for the just only for the work or the money or a financial gain, but to bless others. All right. Next, God's. Next, uh, Joshua chapter 1, 5. I'm coming back to the verse which I read before. As I said, no man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I've been with Moses. I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Right? Is this promise for you? Do you, do you have any doubt? I think we discussed my Matthew as well. And then, look at the Hebrew chapter 6, 13, 5, 6. Make sure that your character is free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake upon you. Actually, forsake you. So, the, so that we confidently say, the Lord is my helper and I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? First of all, every promise that is written is for us as well. It's always, he will always be with you if you're actually in, the line, in line with God's word. It is a promise to overcome fear. As I said, go and... As I said, he himself has said that if you align with God's purpose and will, and he will be your helper, he will be with you, he will never forsake you. Actually, honestly speaking, uh, this verse, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. The song is also there. Many times, uh, God never fails actually. If He says something that I will bless you, He will bless you. And I will be with you, I will be with you. And personally, honestly speaking, I fail God many times. Many times, many times. And God never failed me so far. That's why when I get to my, on my knees and especially quiet time, tears roll down. Actually, I don't cry. <laughs> tears roll down because so much uh, that that I have run through all the days of the work and I see that how much I have been faithful to God in certain things. Did I let God down in certain ways? And I could sit down and see that many times. And, but when it comes to God's promises and purpose and not leaving me, because be, even though I failed him, but he's still with me. And, and the bottom line is that doesn't matter what you go through what you have done how big your problem is he will never let you down all right and there were two teams who went so moving on god's promises all right before that i just there were two teams who went to inspect the land if you remember inspect the land Before going to the promised land, they, they, two teams they went. Uh, when only one team went, actually they divided themselves into two. Because if one who said that it is possible, another one who said, said it is not possible. Let me read it so that we all, we all are in the same line. Then Caleb quieted the people before, the Mo, before Moses and said, We should by all means go up and take possessions of it for we will surely overcome it. Th verse 31, but the men who had gone up with them said, we are not able to go up against the people because they are too strong for us. So they gave out to the sons of Israel a bad report of the land which they said they had spied out saying, the land through which we have gone in spying it out, it is the land that devours its inhabitants. 
and all the people who saw in it are men of great size. And there also we saw a Nephtali, son of Anak, are part of the Nephilim. And we became like grasshoppers in our sight, and so we were in the, and so we were in their sight. All the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and and the whole congregation said to them, "Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in the wilderness? Why is the Lord bringing us into this land, and to fail us by the sword, or our wives and our children, our little ones will become plunder? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt?" So they said to one another. Let us appoint a leader and return to Egypt. Actually, when you face most difficult times, and that's when you realize that you know uh, you drop catches. In other words, that means that you don't hold on to promises. The promise are why we don't believe promises. I'll tell you uh, from my perspective, because we don't believe that God can really help our daily day, day-to-day matters. And what if two groups, right? One group focused on the problem. They saw they were like uh, grasshoppers in front of the other team. And but only two people among them said, "Yes, we can do it." But they didn't focus on the problem, but they focused on the promises of God. So Moses was very clear that he was given a promise. Joshua was very clear that God has spoken to him, but the people around him, some of them, did not believe. And if you do not believe my promises, God said, you will not enter the promised land. Very sad story. Very sad story of the entire Bible, in my opinion, that they have they have, they have given up on it. Caleb, as he said that we should, by all means, should go ahead and take possession of it, for we will surely overcome it. But, but the men who had gone up with them said, "We are not able to go up against people because they are too strong for us." All right. So, what is the, what are the challenges that we face? when it comes to issues right that when it comes to believing and god promises our fo- focus goes more on the problem and we lack of trust in god's promises as i said they did not trust god for their careers their marriage and their life then finally i think before we go into this the third point is god's precepts i'm so sorry uh, for the mismatch in the slides precept i've read it in the google it means that it is general lo- rule intended to regulate behavior or thought in other words that everything that you and i think and go through can be directed directed through a principle or through a precept our lives cannot be don't have to be in the same path what it takes but we can actually direct, align it to the god's word so what did so if you read Read Psalm 19:8. Thank you. Joshua, I think the Joshua chapter one verse eight. I will read it from here. The book of the law shall not depart from you, your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to that is written in the 
written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have success have i not commanded you be strong and courageous do not tremble or be dismayed for the lord your god is with you wherever you go so somebody written bible b i b l e basic instructions before leaving earth i strongly believe there is a connection between our bible reading and our prayer and there is a strong connection between our prayer and our life there is a strong connection between there is a sorry i think i'm not able to pick the points up yeah there is a strong connection between our praying and our life as i said sorry prayer is the most important aspect of christian life because i feel personally safe when i am on my knees it is what is a prayer prayer is basically acknowledging acknowledging god's presence right so why do we need bible right so when we look at this right for example anything you buy anything any product you buy you get a, a manual almost 30 40 pages for a small instrument i bought a table from ikea ikea however you pronounce it and everything that ikea sells they give a manual and they also give all the self assembly kits and what i did is i did i looked at it and i said okay uh, okay this is how it's supposed to be these many screws are there ashit me ashit is a pro of for our entire church who can fix everything but i am just showing the tool kit he has a bigger one so i saw i i found all this ones i really felt interesting i want to sit and just to enjoy with doing this not because yeah so saving money but i enjoyed uh, doing this if you see so many different screws and variety things right and then i said okay they have given page by page every instruction what i did i went through from the step 1 still trip step 32 33 also i did well 34 also i did actually 34 i made a mistake i flipped it the bottom upside down you see that for a desk chair right there's a hole for cables to pull back actually i put it in the front <laughs> and uh, i didn't know what to do how to uh, remove it because the screw you see on the 32 right the screw is quite different it looks it looks like that and you have this 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 one along with that so it goes inside and when you are placing the desk top right it says and you cannot lift it back i was really uh, i was in puzzled actually to uh, do what to do and he said i went back to the first place he says no if you not able to figure it if you broke something call up <laughs> actually call up the customer care and they said it's removable sir they said then then they told that after loosening a bit you have to pull very hard then it came out actually i what why i just felt so like you know i entire day from morning i sat for around 11 till 3 o'clock i've been fixing this i came till 32 and i was so disappointed that i, I did, like uh, i was not able to make it and also it's broken i thought i have to break the whole thing and the the bottom line is that you know sometimes manual is like god's word when you don't get your your way you not able to understand the word right i'm not able to apply calling customer is like a prayer line and should always seek both manual as well as the call the customer care one of the reasons i just felt this is very uh, it applying to our lives is that god who created you and me knows how we function every piece every bit he knows how our life goes he don't need a manual 
So he has given every step of our lives. And if I, you and I want to be aligned in God's purpose, we have to align to the manual. There is no second way of it, through it. Right? So God's ways are certain things that you cannot actually make a shortcut to do it. When it takes to when it takes for you to uh, go back to Bi- uh, go back to Bible and read, and you you that's that's where you find your manual. And most of the times, why we don't read, you know, I'll tell you my personal experience. Not personal experience. I would say that there is a kind of a doubt hint. Does it really happen? See, after this one, whatever I fixed, right? I actually I didn't know how to do it. Actually, I just uh, really prayed, and then only I fixed it. The entire my master degree which I got, two and a half years, I worked very hard. There is sacrifice of family, sacrifice of time, sacrifice of money and many things that went into it. And there are many times I want to give up. There was no help whatsoever, no friends. Because if in India we have somebody, we can just sit with them and just do it. I'm talking about my master degree which I earned. I went through phases of emotions. And every time I hit the rock bottom, it's like a blind man in a blind room and just walking and groping and things holding hold one another. One, 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 like I hold one object, okay, I see a table, then I have to move around. So that's how I felt for the eight, uh, eight, almost eight months. In the entire eight months, I finished only one course. So much pressure. Kids was going through a certain things and Jeremiah was just born. Uh, three months after I enrolled it and it was like a night shift I was doing at home, shifts I was do, doing at work. It's very challenging task and then I, gave, I wanted to give up many times. With me there were about a lot of people enrolled, maybe 30 plus enrolled. Uh, and for our Indian education to the German education, a lot of difference. I'm not degrading our education but I'm just telling that they go by the book, they go by the rule, everything that comes. And then people, I think 90% of them dropped. Only three of us survived. Even the other two who are doing it with me, they're still hanging on. They're, they have not completed this. What I want trying to say is that it was, it was easy for me to give up. I am not looking for a bigger hike, actually. Honestly. I'm already pay, well paid. And I don't need a degree, actually. Right now, looking at it. And God gives a spirit of finisher. No, I, where I learned it from, Pastor Ashok, you know, once he said that I always wanted to take easy things so that I can finish it and I can just feel happy about it. And he said that, what job is that when, if there is no risk that doing worth, you know, what job is that you're doing without, without risk? I really took a risk going, up, going ahead. And if you look at my degree, BSc, which I did, right, so which is 57 percentage, and I always, the car pass, everything is the car pass, just a push. And for the degree which uh, I earned, is actually I worked, I worked day and night and almost like, you know, it is like doing two, three degrees of the caliber that I have already have. So what I'm, the bottom line is this, that don't give up. Even if you re- hit darkest situation, if, whatever the ch- challenge may be, don't give up. And hold on, be strong and courageous. All right, second, uh, finally, the word of God. Why you need word of God in, a, in, in specific, why I want to mention is that it is life for every believer who all, uh, lives as in, on earth as long he lives. And worship and the word are inseparable actually, and worship word and prayer. And most of the times what my uh, burden is, my burden is that, that you know, I want to get certain things, and though I do cry and pray for that, but my burden is that there are times, you know, people, when they join Neon Stars, okay, taking an example, Neon Stars, that they join with, come with the diapers, babies, right? We are so bubbly, so nice, enjoying, worshipping, praying and reading verses. We all, we all enjoy along with them. Because the babies, Josiah, Jeremiah, when you ask them, when you just ask them to read anything and do anything, they do it. So nice. 
as life goes on, actually what they say that, you know, daddy, uh, you know, what, whose glasses is this? <laughs> Just, it's actually Mahima's, Mahima gave it to Jeremiah. So, daddy, I, it's not cool enough. Josiah's teacher says, when you go to school, uh, Josiah and the batch and the below batch, everybody dances when we tell the certain things. But the batch above, the first standard, second, third standard, sir, it is not cool enough, we can't dance. We can't do certain things. People think becoming a believer and transitioning into a little bigger age, right, from Josiah to other age, it's not cool enough. Church is not cool enough. The word of God is not cool enough. It's boring. And doesn't excite, worship doesn't excite them anymore. Prayer doesn't excite them. What excites them? I don't have it. The, the rectangle box. It, my heart breaks. My only role models in the entire my Christian journey is Mahima Nanagra. Don't they look cool? Then can you stand up Mahima? Shoot, look at her. Don't she look cool? Who said she's not cool? So you can be cool, you can wear such glasses, you can do a lot of cool things. A cool hair also you can have. But worship God. My, my aim, my mission, I'm not, a, I'm not leading, Ashutan Jenny is leading worship, Neon Stars, is that even if they don't become uh, high professors or big, big top MDs, I want them to worship. When they come to church, I want them to lift their hands. I want them to worship. And I want them to cheerfully worship the Lord. That's my end goal. If I if ever I'm taking a uh, neon stars, so I'm first they lift their hands, dance and all initially. Then hands once they once they transition to a certain age, their hands come down. Only clap comes. After after a certain age, their hands goes low, mouth also shuts down. And after a certain age, head goes low. They're scratching on the floor and they forgot a bottle. Word of God doesn't excite us anymore. One challenge, one of the biggest problems for this is that the exposure to the social media at the early age. Parents, <laughs> this is my warning, in, not warning, yeah, this is my advice that please watch out what your children are watching at the very early age. YouTube exposure is one of the dangerous things at the very beginning age and exposing to social media. I've, I'm so glad for GKGW, GKGW that they've got taught us principles. And still we know that, you know, that we know, so we have certain boundaries for our kids. We give them screen, but for two hours is the maximum time on a weekend, that to only Friday, Saturday, Sundays. On a day, in a day. I want to thank Pastor Asok and Suni Chechi for doing all that they can to build our neon stars and our kids. All right. I think I had another <laughs> example. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot, all right? So every promise in the Bible is for you. And God says, whatever challenges you face, you certainly, you certainly will overcome it if you're walking in, in line with God's word. And, okay. Do you want to be victorious? Like though you, my MS Dhoni, I, I didn't bring my bat actually. You want to hit a six and lift your hand, lift your bat and see that end. You want to be victorious, align with God's purpose. Know what your purpose is. Align with God's promises and act on it. And claim God's promises and follow God's precepts, the word of God. Walk in line with, do not turn to the left or to the right but in the path of the word. God tells Joshua, do not turn to the left or right. Then only you will be able to successful. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll have one song, the worship, the second worship song, uh, the one, yeah, time up. <laughs>